Hey everyone, this is Evan with Gem State Grubbin' and Gunnin'. I changed my YouTube channel name from The Poser Chef to uh, this one. Originally, when I created the channel, I was going to be making cooking videos and talking about food, which I still plan on doing. Um, really, I just, well, I need to get my shit together. And to be frank with you, I didn't want to maintain two separate channels, one for firearms and one for food. So I decided to combine the both. Um, a friend of mine kind of pitched an idea for a food truck name and I uh, tweaked it a little bit and this is what it is now, I guess. Wanted to give you an update on my A4. My RDO mounting plate finally came in from Beretta. It took about seven days for them to ship. Super happy. A couple days prior to that, I went to my local gun store to buy an RMR. I actually purchased this RMR. And let me check this just to make sure we're clear. I actually purchased this RMR to mount to my A4. As you can see, the color scheme for the FDE doesn't match at all. And aesthetically, you know, I like my stuff to look good. Um, this is just my own personal preference. As you can see here, I have a Novak Dovetail Trigicon mounting plate that allows me the ability to uh, mount an RMR in here. I did have to remove my back sight post. I wasn't ever going to co-witness with my 1911 or my A4 um, just due to the durability and the reliability of Trigicon products. I just don't feel the need to, I guess, co-witness with them. And maybe that's my own ignorance. Um, but, you know, I... Mm, <laughs> it is what it is. And so, I something I want to show you real quick, though, is that unlike the Glock MOS... Uh, editions and things like that the 509 editions where the slides are milled and the optics are made to seat much lower these both sit fairly high and understand that on my 1911 here i have the novak dovetail mounting plate which is already going to sit up high um and but the due to the due to the design of the berettas the 92s they have to have a mounting plate and then with the armor on top of that it just makes them both super tall not that that's an issue um, my 1911 is super accurate back when i had the black armor on here i just needed to get them both to the range and get them zeroed in um, but as you can see i mean it renders my back post on here essentially useless on my 92 or a4 i should say uh which is fine I, again i wasn't going to co-witness anyways but i just i find it funny that they just sit so uh, much higher. Some people may say it looks kind of corny and ugly, but you know, whatever. I They're my guns and so I'm going to do what I want. Anyways, to talk about the A4. So I ended up swapping out the two RMRs. I added the black one on here uh, and I aesthetically think it looks good with all the black accents and black accessories. I have a couple different suppressors that I'm going to run on here, one being my Gemtech uh, Tundra, and then I have an AAC Illusion 9, which I think I was explaining uh, before my previous video, where it kind of looks like an Osprey, where the bulk of the suppressor is underneath. On the AAC, you have to manually, you know, configure it and move it down. But even when I had my A3, I was still able to get a fairly good sight picture with the way that that suppressor is set up. Obviously, on the A3s, you know, they... At the time, I didn't see any mounting plates where you can mount an RMR on here, and they weren't optics cut ready. Um, and so, again, I never had an issue running my AAC with the iron sights. As you can see on here, we have three dot trinium night sights. We do have a Cerakote on here, and I'm, it, a Cerakotes are durable. I get that, but you just have like little, I don't know things like this where you can see right here that it didn't get coated well enough. Um, I believe that this is an NDLC type, which I wish that they would have done on the slide itself, much like the Glocks and whatnot. But, you know, I, you can't get everything. One thing I do wish though, that for the price point on these, and I think the MSRP is about $1,100. I was happy to pick this one up for $900 on off of a local website here. But for the price point, I wish that they would have swapped out the polymer guide rod for a stainless steel guide rod like the uh, LTTs uh, when they come 
you know, standard out of the box with the stainless steel guide rod. Again, for the price point, I kind of wish that Beretta would have just changed that out. But for 40, 50 bucks, I mean, I can just purchase one of my own and change it out myself. Half by uh, 28 threads. Beretta does send you extra O-rings. Uh, on my A9, or on my A3, I actually chewed through like two of those, just, you know, suppressing it, unsuppressing it, and then adding the thread uh, protector back on. Just chewed up through uh, two of those. So hopefully, you know, if uh, you burn through whatever Beretta provides to you out of the box, they can send you some more because they're nice to have just to help, you know, really uh, make sure that your thread protector and things like that don't come loose. Um, this is the G model only where it's a decocker. I never again on my 92s or my 96 had any issues with accidentally dropping the safety. But again, I have small girl hands. Um, it's, it, I know it happens. I've seen it happen in uh, other people's uh, videos and things like that. I just myself personally, I've never had that issue with the with manipulating the safety, but I am happy to, that this is a G model. My uh, LTT is a G model as well. Uh, front slide serrations for press checks. Uh, underneath we have a three slot 1913 rail where I have a Surefire X300U model B on here. The Bs are for steel frame guns. The As are for polymer frame guns, I believe. And I think that they have like different keys and things like that, that you can change it out to basically fit what you need it to, um, even on the A models, I believe. I don't have any, but I think that they do. Um, somebody can correct me if I'm wrong. Uh, these are the Vertex style grips, slim frame 92X uh, grips which mimic the 1911s, which work perfectly for me against, again, because I have smaller hands, I can really get a, a good purchase on the pistol. Let's see, flared or beveled magwell, as I mentioned before, to help with reloads, why Beretta felt the need to keep the lanyard loop on civilian models, I'm not really sure. I don't necessarily plan on, you know, attaching to this this firearm to myself with that I, I i don't know i guess if we come down to a situation where um you know russia takes over like in red dawn then you know maybe it'll be handy super short reset um on the trigger uh oh and i was going to mention too that Breda does provide a hogue wraparound grip to give you that Breda hump for those of you that are just used to that but again because i have smaller hands this grip works perfectly for me the front checker in the back or I'm sorry, on the front and in the back. Uh, like I mentioned before, the reset on this trigger is phenomenal. And so you can see, so I'm gonna pull it. And again, I've checked this for safety. That's crazy, right? Super short reset. Uh, again, I'm going to be running a couple different suppressors on here. My Gemtech Tundra, which is an older suppressor, older model suppressor back uh, before Smith & Wesson bought them out. And then I also have my AAC Illusion 9 that I plan on running um, on here as well. Again, I don't need to worry about co-witnessing because my red dot sits up so damn high. Uh, I should be able to see anything that I put on here. Let's see. Uh, these do come with three 18-round mags right out of the box. The A3s only came... Uh, with three 17 round mags and I did verify that this is the same coating that are uh, that's on the a3 is just is a different color but this is the anti uh, friction coating uh, which is super cool and I guess not that you know I am out in the desert shooting a whole bunch so you know I'm not worried about like sand jamming up my mags and stuff like that uh, but you know it's always cool to have Extended mag release button, perfect. I think it's awesome. I mean, you can really uh, feel that and drop your mags easily. Not that you couldn't with the old mag release buttons, but you know, this points really well for me. Um, I yeah, I just I love the way that these grips are and the the way they fit my hand, which is why I'd never add the wraparound strap. Let's see, I. I think that, that is about it. Like I said, I just wanted to give you guys a quick update on that, and I can't wait to get it out to the range, get it zeroed, and shoot it. Um, have a good day. Thanks.